For almost 60 million years, the continents that made up what is now the known world were dominated by a complex dynasty of hadrosaur nesting colonies, the horned dinosaurs that nested around and defended them, and the tyrannosaurs that preyed upon both. Horned dinosaurs, such as the famous Triceratops, are among the most recognizable and beloved dinosaurs. Horns sheathed in hard keratin and hide armored in massive scales made them imposing in both offense and defense, not to mention the beaks that would make a terror bird jealous. They were extremely successful on Earth, and their legacy on Chimere was even more prolonged and absolute. Following a surge in volcanic activity and a dramatic change in climate, this specialized yet ultimately fragile system collapsed. A mass extinction followed, targeting those most successful and specialized for the former context. The world that followed was dominated by parxosaurs, small titanosaurs, and megaraptorans that were better able to endure the lean times that followed. The meek inherited this broken world. However, not all members of the dynastic clades went extinct. Although horned dinosaurs went extinct in most of the known world, some generalist centrosaurines in the wetlands were the first of this clade to recover. They never reached the numbers of the roving herds of chasmosaurines that so defined the tyrant dynasty, but these smaller animals quickly became large like their predecessors. They faced competition from parxosaurs, a clade of small, generalist dinosaurs that were undergoing an astonishing adaptive radiation and were by that time the most diverse and widespread large herbivores in any habitat. Even so, horned dinosaurs managed to hold their own, particularly in the wetlands of the northern continent. Unfortunately for both dinosaur clades, the portal that brought their ancestors from Earth was spiking in harvest for the first time since the Cretaceous. Mammals were coming through, and mammals have a simple yet monumental advantage in wetland habitats. Live birth. While the horned dinosaurs and parxosaurs had to compete not only with each other, but their theropod and crocodilian predators for nesting sites, mammals were able to populate these verdant wetlands without such concerns. Although dinosaurs grow larger on less food, this advantage of the mammals proved quite successful over time. Rhinoceros, Desmostylians, sloths, and many other mammalian megafauna came to these lush habitats. Over time, this steady influx of invasive species, armed with a simple advantage of live birth, chipped away at the dinosaurs in the wetlands. In the known world today, there are only two genera of horned dinosaurs in the wetland specialist clade. First, we will cover the parrot drake. This little creature, called the Pugget by the Cerid, where they are most common, ranges between 50 and 200 pounds depending on where it lives, with the largest being in the wetlands of the western continent. They are notorious for eating just about anything, from wetland plants and crustaceans to carrion and bark. The other horned dinosaur is by far the largest surviving member of this clade in the known world, the Shield Drakes, which is also the common name of all Chimeran horned dinosaurs. These massive herbivores feed predominantly on aquatic grasses, such as those that dominate the seritic wetlands, using their long beaks as a pair of scythes to cut huge swaths of vegetation and barbed tongues to pull them in. This fast and efficient feeding method is key to their success. They are abundant where vegetation is plentiful, but they cannot last without ample food. There are three subspecies found throughout the known world, with one on each continent. In each of these regions, their populations are stable. Despite the pressures of competition with mammals and parxosaurs, these tanks of horn and muscle prove that the dynasties of old are not to be forgotten. Although the parrot drakes and shield drakes are the last descendants of the horned dinosaurs that were common during the dynasty, they are not the only ceratopsids in the known world. During the Tyrant Dynasty, a population of basal ceratopsids became adapted to the highlands of the northern continent. It was here, while seeking the nutritious taproots common along the spring-fed rivers, that some protoceratopsids became quite nimble. Their legs elongated, torsos became more flexible, and their feet converged in many ways to those of ungulates we find living in mountains today. Their vision shifted to facing front to improve accuracy while leaping. Many other horned dinosaurs have filaments along their tails, 
display structures much like what we see in Cetacosaurus. In this clade, they first became camouflage structures, helping the animal blend into shrubs. Over time, these filaments hardened and grew barbs, converting to an intimidating display. With front-facing vision, these quills afford critical deterrence from rear attacks by dromaeosaurs, their most common predators. While the dynastic extinction wiped out most of their kin, these coarser drakes flourished. In the sudden opening of territory, they came down from the highlands. For several million years, these animals diversified and dominated the northern continent. Over time, however, competition from parksosaurs and the incoming mammals impacted them too. Although cursoriality was superior to other horned dinosaurs, they were not as efficient in travel as parksosaurs or as fast as ungulates. They are somewhat social, living in small groups of related females and one to three bulls. They are by far the most intelligent horned dinosaurs, but that's not saying a whole lot. In the known world today, there are only two genera. One, called the Bauku, is a central creature in my fourth short story, Coben's Menagerie. These horse-sized animals remained in the highlands and mountains, maintaining their ancestral lifestyle of feeding on taproots in hard-to-reach places. They are notoriously aggressive, known to run down and even kill unsuspecting travelers and their mounts. Unlike the horned dinosaurs of the wetlands, they are comfortably omnivorous, and many consider them to be the apex predators of the northern mountains, although they still fall prey to the white cockatrice, a large dromaeosaur in this habitat. Although others of this clade have spread throughout the northern continent and crossed to the eastern continent beyond the known world, the only surviving descendants of the coarser drakes who came down from the mountains is called the Avudi by the Shu. These animals average slightly smaller than the Bauku, although they are often more predatory. Riders note that while they cannot outpace a horse, they have superior endurance especially while the horse is mounted, and groups will sometimes run down a steed. They will feed on vegetation during the wet season, but like many animals on the prairie, turn to almost exclusive carnivory when the rivers dry, aided by a keen sense of smell and binocular vision. A darker subspecies is found in the forests of the northern continent west of the prairie, although little is known about their habits or population, just that they tend to be solitary and are much more shy than their ferocious cousins on the prairie. The descendants of Centrosaurines and Protoceratopsids are the only groups of horned dinosaurs found in the known world today, although other groups are found in greater diversity on the eastern continent. Horned dinosaurs have undoubtedly fallen off their pedestal as one of the pillars holding up the greatest dynasty Chimer has ever known. However, shield drakes have proven that even as a dynasty burns, greatness rises from the ashes often in unexpected ways. Thank you all for tuning in! I really appreciate it! As you may note from earlier posts, I was supposed to kick off this season with an elasmosaur video. As I started prep, I quickly realized that I did not have enough artwork to fully realize the script I was writing. Rest assured that this video will come next month, but I've been so focused on writing my novel during the hiatus that I simply didn't have time if I was going to put a video out today. I hope you enjoyed learning about one of my favorite groups of dinosaurs, and how they persevered despite being a clayed hit hard in the dynastic extinction. Later this month we will learn about the insectivores of the known world, along with a few specials. Stay fantastic! Cheers folks!